Hey, welcome to my channel. So that's how you do that. I'm Joel Latender. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to install vinyl plank from start to finish. Let's get started. So before we could start installing vinyl plank on this installation, we needed to go and do a little bit of floor prep. This is on a concrete slab and we found a really nasty hump in the middle of this floor. So we needed to take the grinder after it. Now there wasn't much dust with this because we were able to connect the vacuum to that. You can really make quick work with a grinder like that. And you could probably rent one in your area. Once we were done with that, we looked for some dips. We mixed up some floor patch, which this is called Ardex Feather Finish. I recommend that anyone needing to do some floor prep would use this product it bonds just about to anything it's really easy to use and when it dries it's it's flexible so it's not going to crack out on you now i like to use a notch trawl to control how much of the depth of the floor patch that i'm putting down so i'm not going to add too much now we'll probably have to put another coat on that spot but this stuff really is easy to work with you can see brandon here my son-in-law he was this is his first time ever doing floor fill he did a really nice job and honestly I think he enjoyed it. So now I had a quick discussion with Brandon. I know what the box says to just start with a full piece and go, but I wanted to know if he had any concern about a small piece being somewhere in the room. And he said, yes, he was concerned. Then I brought him over to the bathroom doorway and I asked him if he wanted to have a transition in that doorway. He said no. So I told him, well, let's put a little thought into this layout. Then. Okay, so the goal here is that we want this joint of the plank to be in this doorway. Okay, we don't want to have it so that it would fall something like this, where we have to wrap around both sides of this door. And you can see we'd have a really small piece there and a small piece there. So we want to try to avoid that. Is all I'm going to do here is I'm going to measure the hallway here. And I have 45 and three quarter. I'm just going to divide that in half. So I made a mark at my spot where it's halfway. Now I moved this over to the center mark there, put it right there, and now you can see I'm gonna have a pretty much a full piece here, which you'd think that's good, but taking the chance of starting over on the other side of the room and having this full piece be here, I don't really wanna take that chance. So what I can do is I can measure this plank, the width of this plank, divide it in half, which I did. It's two and three quarters, so I made a little mark right there. Now I want to move this line over either this way or this way. It doesn't matter. Two and three quarters of an inch. So half a plank. So I measured, made my mark right there. Now if I move this over, you can see how large of a piece I'll have here. And it'll be the same on this side. If I have it right there, you can see it's going to land in the doorway. That should be over a little bit more. Now we're just gonna snap a line here and we'll go and check to make sure that we don't have any tiny pieces anywhere else. Okay, so I had that mark right there and then I measured away from this wall right here and made that exact same mark there. Get it over both these marks and now I'll snap a line. Now that we snap that line, we wanna transfer it out into the family room where we're gonna start our vinyl plank. And what I do is I put together 10 plank and I just measure that to transfer the line over the proper amount of plank from that line. Imagine if I put a bunch of plank together and started at that chalk line we snapped, that mark right there is where the plank would end. So now I just measure from that outside wall, transfer that same measurement down on the other side of the room, snap a line, and now we're just gonna measure around to see if we need to adjust that line at all to avoid a small piece somewhere. All right, so we went around and measured this entire thing, and we're gonna have about an inch and a half piece along this outside wall, but all this is gonna be buried with furniture, so that's the place that we'd rather have a small piece. Now to start plank here, you have a groove, and then you have the tongue, which is a little smaller. Now you always want to point the tongue towards your starting wall, and you always want to work away from the groove as much as possible. So that means we'll work away from the groove this way, and the groove here will work towards that way. So this is a drop and lock, so I haven't pounded this part together yet. Now the rest of this is a tongue and groove. And so what I like to do is I'll take a piece 
and I'll just put it together like this so that I know that I have this straight with this piece right here. And then we'll just continue down doing that same thing. And I'll lock it together. Now you can see I'm leaving a gap here between these two. I don't need these to be together yet. The goal is, is we're just trying to get these planks straight. So now I'm just gonna measure from this piece that we have in there to this line and get it a perfect amount of planks away. Just imagine if I put planks together, that's where we need it to end. So I need to be at 51 inches from this line. So I'm just shy of that, about a quarter inch. So now I'm gonna start here working my way that way, getting it straight. Now I wanna finally cut this last piece right here. Now that I know I have it straight, is all I do, you can see here's the groove. Here's the groove right here on this plank. Just reverse it. Put it up against the wall. Make sure you leave an expansion joint. If your sheet rocks up off the floor, it can go underneath it, which this is. So we're gonna go under a little bit. Okay, so now I'll get this into position. And then I'll just take this piece so I can get this so it's perfectly straight too. I'm gonna cut a plank here, a scrap. I'm gonna cut the locking system off, which is the groove, not the tongue. And now we're gonna use this. as a cheater board. And now I'm just gonna take this cheater board and run it up against the wall. And this is marking my plank for this piece that we're putting in there. So these are smaller pieces, so it's a little different or a little tough to get these together, this first part. So just try to line these up as much as you can. Remember, we're not pounding these down yet. Just get it in the main part of the groove or the joint, the groove. Slide it all the way down until you get this to where it needs to be. And we'll just keep doing that all the way down. Okay, so I got all this together. Now I'm, gonna, now I'm committed to pounding the joint down. So these, with these spacers, they just give it a twist till it's tight and then make sure your, your tape measure's up in the locking system, up against the finished part. And then make sure you're the perfect amount that you need to be away, which mine is 56 and 9 sixteenths. All right, I wanna to talk to you about how you stagger your joint. You want this to be a random pattern. So here's one joint right here. Now on my next row, I put the joint here. And now I'm gonna start with the joint right here. So there's no formula to this. Just make sure that these joints never line up with one another. That's all you need to do. It's as easy as that. So all we want to do is get this plank started inside the joint and then get it locked or in there, have it up at an angle. Once it gets into the channel correctly, just slide it back until you get this lined up correctly. Take your tapping block. Now it's all down flat. This is lined up right. Now I just take my mallet and hit that in. Okay, one of the things that you can have a problem with is getting these joints down on these drop and locks and this part breaking. So what you can do is get that in place and then take a scrap piece, stick it in there. Once you get this in correctly, 
and it's all locked in. Now this will be perfectly lined up. Now just take your mallet and hit that down and it should go down there perfectly without any problems. Okay, so we laid out this pad. Now you can see I left like an eighth inch gap there. You want to leave a little bit of a gap just just so that it doesn't overlap somewhere. And then you just peel this off. And then as you, then you're just going to stretch this over. So pretty simple. Just make sure before you commit to sticking it down that it's not overlapping. Now, if you do make a mistake or something happens, this stuff is releasable. You just pull it right back off. Stick it right back on. What we need to do now is cut this row in. So we're just gonna take some plank and line it right up on top of this plank that's already been installed. But we're gonna make sure that the butt joint's different than the butt joint on the plank underneath. And in the last few rows. And we're just gonna line this entire row up. See right here how I have that lined up perfectly. Now what we're gonna do to come around into this hall is I'm gonna hook up a scrap piece right here and then I'm gonna hook up plank to that scrap piece and I'm gonna extend it all the way down into this doorway where we want it to end. But make sure that this plank stays straight. So just in case the wall is crooked, I'm gonna hook on another piece right here. And that all still stayed straight, so I'm gonna stick with where I measured it. Now I'm just gonna run the cheater board along the wall here. So we'll cut all that out. And this little part right here will come up through the door. So now to keep it straight, I'm just gonna attach another plank on here. I got my starter piece for the next row. I'll just slide this one down where it needs to go. because I can't slide this all the way back. So you can see there's like a half inch gap there. So I'm gonna cut this in first and then we'll finish out the rest of this row. All right, so I got that piece in. I'm starting to lay this out. Let's get this marked. Now what's most important for me here is that I have a joint in this doorway to make it easier to put these pieces in. So yeah, like I said, making sure that you put a joint in the doorway here really makes this a easy piece to put in then.
Okay, everything's in and then just give it up. So I just come right at the corner here, I cut in, and then I'm just gonna cut straight out. Plop it in. Before I did that, I made sure I was all pretty much close to here. So to start into this bathroom here, what we're going to do is just connect a scrap piece right here. Connect another piece to that scrap piece. And put that together and that's going to force this to get straight down here. And I'll just put this piece in. Then I can use another piece down here get this put together and that's going to help me hold that straight and now I'll just measure right here and what this measurement is here I'm going to make it the same down here tapping block to put that in place without tipping it up at an angle but you know I mean I'm using a pretty heavy duty tapping lock here you want to make sure that if you have a weak locking system that breaks easy you use a scrap and then just you put the scrap on there and hit that into place now we want to put some spacers in here to hold this in place. As you've seen through this video, these spacers are really handy. Actually, they're absolutely incredible. I love using these things. Now, at the end of the video, I'm going to go through all of these tools. I'll share with you where you can get them. These spacers aren't something you can get from Home Depot or Lowe's, so I'll share a link with you in the description, but I'll also talk to you about the mallet, the pull bar, the tapping block, and that hook knife you always see me use. So what we're doing here is I'm lining the plank up right here, and then I'm lining the locking system up with the locking system of the plank underneath. Now along this tub here, I usually only want to have an eighth of an inch gap along here. You can go a little bit more than that, but because it's a vinyl plank, it's not going to expand and contract too much, um, if at all, especially the SPC with a stone core. This right here is going to be just fine to be able to leave an eighth inch gap, and then we'll use a silicone to fill in that gap and make it look really nice and pretty. Now I want to make sure that I make this cut really pretty and not jagged or any chipping at all. So I'm going to use a circular saw on this. You could also use a table saw or even a utility knife, but this particular plank, this does not cut with a utility knife for me. Thank you. 
see how that looks all the way along there. Nice consistent gap all the way. It'll look nice when we caulk it. So to do this flange is all I did is I cut a piece. I'm going to overlap this plank on top of here. Lining up the locking system. Now I'm just going to take my cheater board and I'm going to mark where the end of this is right here on this plank. And then I'm going to turn it this way and I'm going to mark where it ends over on this side. And then same thing over here. Just try to square it up. I'm squaring it up with the locking system right here. So I know it ends somewhere right in there. So what we want to do is we just want to have a joint right here. So before I mark and cut this, I'm going to cut the flange first. So here's the piece right here that I have cut to end right at that pipe right there. Now I lined up these two edges perfectly. And you can get something like this from the hardware store for a couple of bucks. It's the same size as the flange over there. And I'll just draw this circle. Of course, you want to make this so it's big enough. It's going to be oversized so that we have an expansion gap around the flange. Okay, so I went out and cut all this. I used a jigsaw to cut this. And trust me, with this SPC core, it eats jigsaw blades for breakfast. So don't buy the good ones if you use a jigsaw. And then this broke. No big deal though because the toilet's going to cover that. I'll stick this piece in. Now I'm going to have to cut part of this locking system off here, so I'm just marking it, and that's what I'm going to cut right there. And then this piece right here I already pre-cut, and so I just made a couple of marks, like here and here, and then figured out where it went this way, where it ended, and then I just draw drew a little circle there. Now remember, that's going to get covered. I'll probably cut it a little smaller than what I'm showing there, but it can be pretty decent sized. Okay, we'll stick this piece in and I'll that all looks like. Now I'm putting full pieces in behind this toilet. You don't have to, you can put parcels in. But I kind of like that full pieces around the toilet. Now this piece right here is a cutoff that I had from my very first wall. And so since I just have the tongue on here, I'm just going to line the tongue up right with the joint there. And now I'll just use the cheater board to mark and cut this last piece. This last piece in place and then just use the pull bar if I need to to make sure it's in there. So now I'm just taping to do some silicone here. Okay, so I ripped this piece of tape right here, no big deal. But what I want to do is I want to make sure that when I pull it, I pull from that side so that it all comes off in nice one nice fair full swoop here because I'm going to have this tape overlapping it. Oh, if I can get it right here. So if I pull off from down there then this piece will still come with it all at one time. On the wood. It's hard to see, but there's bare, There's a little bit there. Now I'm using 100% silicone here, and I'm just gonna make sure I get it full. There's a little bit of a gap under this tub. I wanna make sure I get it full all the way. Just work it in. It can be kinda sloppy putting it down because you have the blue tape. Tape. 
hopefully. And then I'm just gonna take both at the same time and just peel nice and slow. A nice little bit of that left. So this video was really packed with a lot of stuff here. I hope it helped you out. If you have any questions, let me know. I do have a website that you could come and join and I'll help you one-on-one -on -one through your project. I'll leave a link below for that. It's called Plank Bootcamp, so you can go check that out. Now I'm gonna go through the tools that we went through um, that I used in this installation. This is that spacer. You can see it adjusts back and forth just by turning this knob right here. These things are really nice, fast, they work unlike any of the other spacers out on the market. I will have a link to my tools page, which will bring you to these tools that I'm sharing with you. Absolutely incredible. Now this comes in a pack of four, okay? Most installations you could get away with about 12. You could get away with two packs of these, and that's a total of eight. I personally like to have about 12 to 16 of them. That's pretty much gonna get you through any job. If you ordered two packs of these, you'd probably regret that you didn't order one more pack, but two packs would get you through. It's just, you can, you know, steal these from one area and use them in another, but three is pretty much, could get you through just about any job. It's when you get on those really long walls that you'd want to have a lot more of these. This is the tapping block that I use. It's a really nice heavy duty tapping block. I like using this one because when you need the power, it's there. You can also hit it really lightly like I shared with you inside this video. So I'll also leave a link for this. This is really one of my favorite tools. Actually, all four of these things that I'm showing you are, or five of them actually, I'm gonna share one more thing with you. Here's a mallet. You don't need to have this big heavy duty one, but if you're an installer and you want to check out this mallet, I will leave a link for this. I also use this for wood installations when I'm doing a three quarter inch solid. Um, use this to hit the to hit the the plank or the wood plank into place, and then also use this for the nail gun. So this pull bar right here is what you see me use inside this video. Okay, this is my favorite pull bar. Unfortunately, they don't make this one anymore. Okay, but they make one that's similar. Bullet Tools makes this. There's one other one that I use too that Crane makes. I'll have both of those on that tools page I'm talking to you about. I just like to have a good solid tapping block and a good solid pull bar to make sure that you're gonna be able to use it in those spots where you really need to beat on it a little bit. A lot of these pull bars that you'll find out on the market are really cheap. You hit them once and they're dead. That's not what you want. The two tools I would not cheap out on are gonna be the pull bar and that tapping block. Now the last tool that I wanna share with you is this hook knife that I use. This is actually called a linoleum knife. This is by far my most used tool that I have in my arsenal. I love this tool. You've seen me use it a lot inside this video. These are really inexpensive. I have a bunch of them laying around. I use them for everything. I mean, and when I say everything, I mean everything. If you have one of these, you're gonna find yourself going and finding this out of the toolbox for many of the things that you do around the house. Check this out. These things are absolutely incredible. Love this tool, been using it for 30 some years. If there's one other video of mine that you watch, this would be the video I would tell you to watch. So click on that and that'll bring you to another video and it'll walk you through another installation, showing you some other tips that I wasn't able to put into this video. Really a good one to go to. These are the two videos I'd tell you to watch. I just wanna thank you for watching this video, giving me your time. I hope that I was able to help you. And I do hope and pray that God blesses you and your family. And I hope he blesses you through this project. And I pray for that in Jesus' name. All right, my friends, I'll see you on the next video.